Ryan Leonard's four points helps lift the Eagles over the Huskies. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked on Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the SiriusXM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. I would love to talk Capitals hockey with you one on one, and we can do that on subtext. Just check the show description for more details. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet that's 200 bucks if your bet wins visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started so in this edition of locked on capitals we talk about the capitals first round draft pick ryan leonard and his huge game a four-point game that helps lift the Eagles uh, over the Huskies in just one heck of a game and how he continues to get it done for Boston College and what that will mean when he's ready for the Capitals. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We will talk about the goalie situation for the Capitals. There's going to be a lot of question out there. Goalie question is Charlie Lindgren and Darcy Kemper, but is that who it should be? I'll talk about that. And then a little bit later, we will talk about how the game against Boston will be John Carlson's 1000th game. But just to get it going here, talking about Ryan Leonard, And can we have him on this team already? I mean, we've talked about it. I think that uh, he is the missing ingredient that could definitely help catapult this team over the top and was evident on the ice as he was huge for the Boston College Eagles. And that's the question I pose here. Can we just add Ryan Leonard to the roster right now? I mean, let's just do it. Leonard was the first round pick eighth overall that the Caps selected at the 2023 draft. And, you know, I've talked about on the show and a lot of different insiders said, you know, they should have gone, tried to select Medve Mishkov. They should have tried to go after Benson, those kind of players. But as we see what kind of player Ryan Leonard has turned into, kind of always has been, but it really seems like he's hitting his stride right now. I think the Capitals hit the absolute uh, jackpot here. Uh, First round pick, eighth overall, and has been clutch for Boston College. Leonard has lit it up all season for Boston College, and Friday was no different. Leonard scored two goals and two assists for four points to help lift Boston College over the Michigan Tech Huskies and the Boston College Eagles onto the NCAA tournament. So there's one thing that I know for sure is that Ryan Leonard is uh, getting quite a resume already. Uh, We know that what he did for juniors and now what he's doing for Boston College when he is ready to go for the Capitals, look out. I think he is going to be one of the most dynamic players, the most hyped player. I'm hyped. Are you guys hyped about it? I think that he is going to really help this team lift him over the top. Leonard has been nothing short of amazing all season for the Eagles. If you followed their season and what Ryan Leonard has done, he has been nothing but Mr. Clutch through 58 games, has 29 goals and 29 assists for 58 points. Uh, Quite the season for Ryan Leonard. Today's game marked Leonard's seventh multi-point game of the season and sixth multi-assist game of the year. Uh, And if you got a chance to watch it, I saw the highlights. I want to say the game was on ESPN or one of the ES, you know, multi ESPN channels. It was quite something. Leonard, who draws a lot of comparisons to Tom Wilson, has the potential to even exceed Wilson's talents, in my opinion. Uh, And the only real comparison is just the snarl to his game and the body size. 
Um, and I think that if you take a look at Leonard, he's going to have to grow into his body, kind of like Tom Wilson did. But when I think uh, Ryan Leonard uh, has hit his stride, I think that he will even surpass what uh, you know the player that Tom Wilson is. And I'm sure that he hates the comparison. I'm sure Wilson's not in love with it either. It's just that they have certain qualities, I guess, that are somewhat similar. He's a powerful quick skater with a great shot, a quick shot. And it's quite stunning. If you haven't seen the videos, take a look online. Uh, just his shot and his release is, is second to none. He's got some snarl to his game and can be an intimidating to the opposition. This is the same Leonard that won gold at the World Juniors. That's what I'm talking about. His resume uh, already uh, is quite something that uh, if it can translate, even in part uh, to the big team, the Capitals, that would be something. And, you know, Brian McClellan didn't really hide his feelings about what he thought about Ryan Leonard. Uh, it was the presser after Kuznetsov uh, was put in the player's assistance program, or no, after he was uh, waived, rather, there was a press conference uh, that Brian McClellan held and they were asked, they asked him about Ryan Leonard. And the question was, when do you think that Ryan Leonard will be good to go? He says, right now, I thought he was good to go at camp. So I think that all he has to do is say, hey, I'm ready to go, and I think it will be full steam ahead. But one of the things that Brian McClellan had said is that he didn't want to rush Ryan, that he wants him to take the time to be ready for when he's good to go. You know, sometimes you don't want to, you know, push these players too quick. You don't want to stunt their growth. And sometimes that's the case. That's what you can do when you try to rush these players too quick. But what we've seen uh, at Boston College, I mean, granted, it's not professional hockey yet, but uh, Boston College is a hockey hotbed. Uh, some premier talent uh, has gone through Boston College. So it's going to be something to see uh, what he decides. Will he decide to go pro next season? Uh, I think a lot of it has to do in part if, you know, he wants to spend more time in college to develop his game and, and just, you know, go to school. Um, or is he ready to go pro and just, you know, bring home the big bucks? Uh, I think that it's going to be tempting for him. I think that, you know, the Capitals will try to be persuasive, despite the fact that Brian McClellan said he's not going to rush him into anything. I think that when the offers out there, it will be a difficult offer for uh, Ryan Leonard to turn down. But for right now, from what I've seen, very hyped uh, to see what he has in the tank. Because you take a look at the Capitals this season, for example, they're good, but this team would be exponentially better with a goal score, the skating touch uh, of Ryan Leonard on this team. And it, I'm kind of giddy with a, with the thought of where he's going to fit in and what that will mean for the Capitals. To have Leonard out there with Wilson and Ovechkin, uh, I think that this team is just going to be next level. So for me, I'm really hoping that it is the case, selfishly, I guess, that he's ready to go next season because there's no – knocks to his game i've watched a lot of highlight packages primarily and there's no glaring gaffes defensively or glaring deficiencies in his goal scoring or his skating uh like there's been some knocks on crystal's game for example there's none of that ultimately with that and that's you know in big part because he is that first round draft pick generally when players are picked that high their game is really good and i'm going to go ahead and say that ryan leonard's game is is near perfect. Uh, I'm not going to say perfect, but it's near perfect. And as Capitals fans, you should be super hyped for when he joins this team. Kind of my hunch, my intuition is that he will join this team in the fall. And then it's lookout. I think this team is going to be taking it to the next level. All right. So straight ahead here, we will talk about the goaltender situation in Washington. I haven't really spoke about this since Sam Sonoff and Vanacek, but we're talking about it again. I'll discuss coming up. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time 
or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the goalie situation in Washington, what is Dan talking about? Well, it's an interesting position that the Capitals find themselves in as they are in the hunt for the playoffs. And the number one netminder is Charlie Lindgren. That is definitely not how the season was scripted out. Of course, we knew that it was going to be most likely Darcy Kemper, but something strange happened and Darcy Kemper has faltered. Uh, he has had not one of his best seasons, actually one of his worst seasons, statistically speaking. So that opened a door and a possibility for Charlie Lindgren. And what has he done? He has seized the moment and took over as the reigning number one. There's no question, there's no doubt that I don't think that Darcy Kemper's going to swoop in and, and save the day. It's Charlie's net, and it's an interesting situation about how the Capitals proceed between now and the playoffs, and if there's a long push in the playoffs, what do the Capitals do here in this situation? The Capitals have a tough question to answer sooner than later. Is the lingering Kemper tandem built for a playoff run? It's an interesting question. What do we remember about Darcy Kemper in his last two starts? In one of the games, he got a hook, the hook in the game. In the other game, he gave up, I want to say it's like seven goals. So it's an interesting position for the Capitals. Lindgren has risen to unquestionably the number one netminder for the Capitals, but there are still some games to play in the regular season, and the playoffs go until the summer. So we know that Charlie Lindgren at some point is going to need a break or, you know, maybe something horrible will happen and he gets injured. Is Darcy Kemper the right guy to back up or is he the guy that's capable of being a number one? A crazy question to ask considering that uh, how much money he's getting paid for one in his history. He is a Stanley Cup winning netminder. But there's a lot of questions. And I don't know if this is a lot of questions for a lot of other people. But it is for me, and it's a concern that the Capitals have made it this far, and they don't really have a rock steady backup netminder. Uh, you know, if you take a look at him in his history, it's like, what are you talking about, Dan? He has been playing poor pretty much this entire season, um, and his last two starts in particular have really drawn this into question for me. Kemper has been inconsistent, to say the least, in the last couple of starts, and the Capitals can't afford to risk losing games when Kemper gets the start, which inevitably will happen. Kemper is 500 on the season with a 13 and 13 record. 500. That's pretty middle of the road, if you ask me. Last season, he was 22 and 26 through 20 or 57 games. His high water mark was the, with the Avalanche in the 2021 2022 season with a 37 and 12 record. He got lit up and got the hook versus the Canes where he allowed four goals on 22 shots. The game before was no better, where he took the loss versus the Oilers and surrendered seven goals on 37 shots. Uh, now, all things considered, 37 shots, that's quite a bit of shots, isn't it? Uh, that is a dynamic Oilers team that has firepower aplenty. Um, and, you know, you could say that, you know, anytime that Charlie Lindgren uh, struggles out there. I'm quick to point out that it's the defense. So I'm not going to give, you know, Darcy Kemper a, a pass or I'm not going to, to go extra hard on him. Shall I say the defense struggled in front of him. If there's 37 shots, there should have been some block shots. There was probably some blown assignments, those kind of things. So, uh, but by and large, 
his last two starts and this season, just to generalize, has not been one of his better seasons. The difficult position, too, is how much money he is getting paid. Darcy Kemper signed a five-year, $26 million, $250,000 contract with the Capitals, including $26,250,000 guaranteed and an annual average salary of $5,250,000 in 23-24. Kemper will earn a base salary of six million while carrying a cap hit of five million two hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, he is set to be a UFA in the 27 28 season. So they are paying him a boatload of money to be a 500 uh, netminder. Uh, and you know, uh, just to, to kind of not even look at the money part of it, it's just that when he's in there, he's inconsistent. This is a guy that was drafted round six, 161st overall in 2007. College played for the Red Deer Rebels, and uh, you know has the the, the history. Uh, it's just as of late, and maybe it's you know the argument could be made is that he's not getting regular starts that uh, he's rusty, but you know, that, that doesn't really wash too much. This guy has the history. It's just, they need to find a way to figure it out. A five-year deal, 26 million, 250,000. That is a lot of money to pay a guy that uh, is not necessarily the number one and the guy that can get it done on a night in and night out basis. So the question now is what do the Capitals do as the backup? There's a lot of, you know, well, everyone's like, well, they that's who it's going to be. There's no other options. Well, there are options if the Capitals are willing to take it. Hunter Shepard, who is no stranger to the Capitals, is currently ranked number one in the AHL with a 23-3-3 and and record in 29 games. Ranked number one, not for the Bears, in all of the American Hockey League. And who sits at number two? Clay Stevenson with a 21-9-2 record in 32 games. A good chunk of the season, he was the number one netminder in the AHL. So it vacillates between the both of them. Win-win situation. Uh, if you're asking me, I would go with Hunter Shepard as he has the history with the team, but that's the tough decisions to make. Uh, there is no time to worry about feelings. There's no time to worry about, well, we got to get this guy a start. If you're just putting him in there to get a start, that could very well be a game that the Capitals could lose. We know the schedule is really uh, tough coming up. We can't afford to put Kemper in there and, and, and totally blow a game. Uh, you take a look at the game where he got the hook, and uh, uh, Spencer Carberry said it was a tough decision to make, but it was the right decision to make. So how would it happen? How would they be able to get Hunter Shepard or Clay Stevenson on the team? I guess they could use a, a call-up for one of them. That would be a kind of a tricky move. And then there's also the Black Aces, uh, which is when there's an expanded roster. Usually the Black Aces, however, is if your AHL affiliate or your ECHL affiliate, whatever the case might be, is eliminated from the playoffs what's one of the things that we know is that the Hershey Bears are probably deadlocked to go to the Calder Cup final so it's going to be a bit interesting they still could use a call up uh, between now and the end of the season would the Capitals make that brave strong kind of uh, crazy move in a lot of circles to call up someone like Hunter Shepard or Clay Stevenson if Darcy Camper is not perceived to be a competent number two um, because, you know, this is a tough time of year. And we've seen this before from different netminders. As great as Braden Holtby was in 2018 in the Stanley Cup run, he faltered kind of towards the tail end of the season. And uh, Philip Grubauer needed to come in and save the day. Um, say for some reason, Charlie Lindgren uh, does falter. Say some for some reason he gets injured. How confident as a Capitals fan are you with Darcy Kemper being the number one, not living on former glory, talking about what he's done this season. 500. He's a 500 netminder, and they're paying him $26 million plus. Uh, a lot of questions, and I hate to even put the money part in there, but they backed up the Brinks truck to him. And why did they do that? Because Sam Sonoff and Vanacek were inconsistent. 
Interestingly enough, Sam Sonoff has had a bumpy year for the Toronto Maple Leafs, but is playing really, really well and is rumored to be maybe one of the starters if they make it to the playoffs. So uh, it's interesting that Sam Sonoff was a netminder that the Capitals tried to retread and retread. Uh, and I always talk about, and if you're an everyday of the show, you know I talk about that sometimes a change of scenery is what the doctor ordered. In any event, I, I don't care. Sam Sonoff, I wish him nothing but the the best. I wish, wish uh, Vanacek uh, nothing but the best as well. However, uh, that the, the situation that the Capitals are in right now is a difficult one. When it's Charlie Lindgren in there, I'm confident. When it's Darcy Kemper in there, I'm not so confident. So that is definitely something that the Capitals and guys that make tougher decisions to me, i.e. Brian McClellan and Spencer Carberry, are going to have to search their heart of hearts. How confident do you think Spencer Carberry is to put uh, Darcy Kemper into a game? And, you know, if you take a look at the schedule ahead, um, could you put, if I was going to have to do it, well, I guess it would be against the Sabres or I guess it would be against the Senators, but how confident would you be to put Kemper in versus the Bruins, uh, the Red Wings, uh, something of that nature. That's what I'm talking about. And if your confidence is not 100% facing those teams, then I think your decision is an easy one. You need to have that competent guy that's like, okay, Charlie Lindgren's not in the game. That's fine. We got another great number two. And uh, so an interesting position for the Capitals to be in. I hope they make the right decision. And, uh, you know, if it's Darcy Kemper and, they're, you know, the Capitals are kind of on the cusp of making it in the playoffs or they're in the playoffs and he's called in, is he the guy? Something for you to think about this Friday evening. All right. So coming up here after the break, we will talk about how it's John Carlson's 1000th game as the Capitals take on the Bruins. How did he get there and what does he mean for the Capitals? I'll discuss straight ahead. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team. Every day we're doing a Friday night podcast talking about the Capitals, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And uh, in this segment here, we are going to talk about John Carlson, a rock steady blue liner for the Capitals, has been for years, and a key piece. You know, you could almost put him in the category of one of the untouchables for the Capitals. He's that big of a piece. He's a guy that can eat up a lot of minutes. And there's a lot of guys that you can put out there and eat up a lot of minutes, but they won't get the kind of production that John Carlson can. So it's going to be a, a great moment for him uh, getting his 1,000th game. We know that T.G. Oshi had that honor here recently as well. Uh, quite an evening or after, yeah, an evening game it will be for John Carlson. John Carlson is a minute monster for the Caps and is on the cusp of playing his 1,000th game. John routine, routinely logs in around 30 minutes a night. That is a whole lot of minutes for a player to take on. And, you know, sometimes if you're a player and you say, you can kind of talk about that one time I played 30 minutes, John Carlson routinely plays around 30 minutes a night. Quite something. Uh, a guy that's not the youngest guy on the team um, can still get it done at 34 years old. And not just putting in his time, he's a big contributor defensively and offensively. Take a look at the game against Carolina. He scored a timely goal. But it's not just that. He also blocked a team best four shots. He is that tough guy, that energizer buddy that just doesn't, uh, doesn't, uh, the battery never fails on him. He just keeps going and going and going. The only thing that stopped him is when he took the puck off the head. Uh, other than that, he is a really rock steady uh, blue liner for the Capitals. It's a tough grind. It's a tough season, he said, of the Caps coming down the stretch amid pressure packed playoff race in the Eastern Conference. That drains you more than skating up and down the ice. And we need players like John Carlson right now. Uh, the blue line has, a, you know, some young players, some up and comers. You take a look at Rasmus Sandin, who figures to be a part of the present and the future, Martin Farabari as well. And then you widen the lens a little bit and take a look at Vinny Iario. And, you know, you take a look at John Carlson. He is chewing up uh, 30 minutes uh, a night, you know, generally that you are going to need to have your eyes on the future. 
you know, we thought that uh, Ethan Bear was going to be that guy, but I'm not so sure that is the case anymore. That is why you need these veterans to kind of show these young guys the ropes and what they can expect. Saturday, when the Bruins make a stop at Capital One Arena, Carlson, one of the backbones of the blue line and alternate captain, will be the first defenseman in franchise history and just the third player to skate in 1,000 games for the team. Alex Ovechkin, Nick Backstrom are the others. Carlson hasn't seen his production diminished at 34 years old. Spencer Carberry also appreciated what he means to this team, of course. Uh, when he's out there, there's a reason. Listen, they don't just put him out there for no reason. They put him out there because he gets results and he can shut down. He's a shutdown defenseman when he needs to be. He's a stabilizing force back there because he plays in every situation. First unit power play, first unit penalty kill, most difficult matchups five on five. Carberry said there's not a lot of guys in the league that are truly first over the boards for everything. And that's who John Carlson is. He's a huge piece. And I think that oftentimes Capitals fans and maybe the, some of the players take him for granted uh, that, you know, you take a look at the other guys on the blue line. I mean, who else is going to fill in and, and play that kind of role? We remembered when he got injured before it was Gustafson that filled in. And I think it was like TVR, that kind of thing. But even those guys still didn't quite measure up, in my opinion, to what kind of player John Carlson is. And just taking a look at him statistically for this year, through 72 games this season, he has seven goals and a team leading 38 assists. So this is a guy that is aging like a fine wine and happy to have number 74 on this team. We hope that he is on this team for years to come because we know what he means to this team. He's rock steady. Uh, he never falters. He never fails. We got to give him a break. He took a puck off the head and he missed some time. But other than that, he is pretty much unstoppable. All right, listen, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, your only daily year-round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. And I want to thank all of you that listen on the audio side and watch this on YouTube. You are ultimately what makes this show successful. When you're done here, head on over to Locked On's 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.